Saturdays. Welcome to Small Business Saturdays video series with your host and my husband. And my dad, Aaron Montgomery. Join the conversation. Let's talk some business. All right. Welcome. Uh, how's, how's it? First off, my name is Aaron Montgomery. And uh, morning, Todd. How are you? Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to check that. Hey, there we go. It works. Cool. Uh, so I'm trying out a new new service here. And uh, as you can see, there's some new graphics one way or the other. I don't know which way to point. <laughs> um, so good stuff there. Uh, it's a service called StreamYard. So I'm trying it out. The, the other service I was using, uh, BeLive.TV, uh, they've just been really struggling with the video quality and things like that. So um, it was time to renew, and I said, you know what, I need to I need to check things out. So um, they haven't gotten back to me on on any improvements or, or changes there. So uh, definitely trying something new here today. So let me know if you guys, you know, if anything seems off or different, too loud, too quiet. Uh, you know, you, you can't change this. Unfortunately, this face is going to be the same. But um, <laughs> maybe because it's not all fuzzy, you guys have to put up with with my face here this morning. So. <laughs> Rich, good morning. Thanks for uh, tuning in this morning. I appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to chatting with you today. Uh, uh, um, Eric says, watching on a phone for a bit before we hit the road. Hope you have a great one. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate that. Yeah, safe travels and and uh, hope a trip to Colorado was good. And uh, Todd, yeah, I have checked into OBS. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's just me or, or whatever. It was just so complicated. I, I've actually have been looking at a couple of other things where I, I can do some green screen and and some other stuff like that. But uh, we'll see. Um, OBS. Yeah, I, I've looked at it. Boy, I, I just couldn't figure it out. So maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm not smart enough, but um, <laughs> uh, appreciate the, the tip there. I'm assuming that's what you use, Todd, uh, for the Tuesdays with Todd and all the other things that you do. So um, Maybe uh, maybe you can help me with that. So, Julia, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you uh, tuning in here today and uh, looking forward to a, a quick conversation. So um, good thing this is video. You guys can't smell me because I haven't had a chance to take a shower yet. Uh, at 7 a.m. this morning, my son, uh, who's sitting right out there waiting patiently for me, um, he, um, oh, there we go. Interesting, Eric. I'll, I'll get to that in one second, actually. So. Um, he just whooped my butt in a 5k. Uh, we, we did pretty good. You know, we're not breaking any world land speed records or anything like that, but, uh, we had a pretty good run. He finished in, I think 35, uh, minutes and 47 seconds. And, uh, I, I came in, I saw him, I was right there with him all the way nearly to the end. And then, uh, he turned the corner and saw the finish line and had a lot more left in the tank than I did. Uh, it was funny. I was, running with uh just happened not that i knew him it just happened that we were all kind of running together these three nice uh young ladies were running about the same pace that i was so i was kind of right there in the mix with them and lewis was a little bit ahead of us and he turns the corner and takes off and i kind of yelled at him to to go and and good job and and you got it buddy kind of thing and then they they kind of turned and looked at me and like uh, I wish I had that left in the tank. You know, I could sprint to the finish and I'm looking at them. I, I, and I said to him, well, I am actually sprinting to the finish right now. So, <laughs> um, it was fun. We had a blast and, uh, it was, it was great, uh, Patriots day run. Uh, it was what it was all about supporting the backstoppers here and the USOC. So, um, there were several firefighters running in full gear, like face masks, uh, air, the whole thing. Amazing. So that was cool. Check out my Instagram page, my stories over there. I uh, did a little quick live at the end with my son and uh, it was fun. So Instagram.com slash Aaron M underscore STL is where you can find me over there. So uh, yeah. Okay. Well, real quick, back to Eric's comment here. It says OBS doesn't deal with live comments well easily. Um, Todd says, get the Streamlabs version, super easy move. You learn it. Okay. I'll have to definitely check into that. So far I'm, I'm, I'm liking what I've got going on here with StreamYard though. So brand new, um, actually the, the, uh, founder has reached out to me personally to see if I need anything. Um, so kind of cool. Right, check it out. You know, I, and don't get me wrong. I love to be live for a long time. They were always really great. And, uh, so I'm not, not anti be live yet, but I just need to make sure that, uh, um, 
I'm doing something that uh, is working a little bit better right now. So <laughs> Todd says, uh, shocker, I used to run sub six minute miles. Man, that's some, that's awesome, Todd. Good, good on you. I, I used to run pretty regularly back in uh, high school and right after high school and ran a lot of 5Ks and ran cross country and stuff like that. And uh, I was I was in the 620 mile mark. So that meant that uh, on my team uh, at, in high school, I was the, uh, I don't know what you call it, kind of the anchor leg. It was your top 10 finishers. And I normally finished ninth or 10th for our team. And so my coach was back there calculating how many guys I had to pass be, so we could win the meet. And uh, boy, and he would get mad if we didn't throw up at the end. He's like, you didn't run hard enough. You didn't throw up back in the old school days where <laughs> um, I think I skipped practice one day and he smacked my head into the locker telling me to pull my head out and that that was not the right thing to do. So um, anyhow, Julia says, my husband's a firefighter and the gear is not light or cool. It weighs about 70 pounds. Yeah, I mean, I was so impressed with these guys. I mean, obviously they're, they're representing their group and, and, uh, holy cow. Yeah. One guy, full, like I said, full gear, 70 pound gear and, um, really amazing that, uh, he was, you know, just moving right along. He's carrying a flag, uh, the whole way too. And, and, uh, so yeah, it really made me proud to be a part of that event this morning and, uh, checking in. Uh, I believe this is my wife checking in from <laughs> my page here. So Kyleen is up in Minnesota, so she didn't get to uh, run the race with us this morning. She would have. She would have beat me too. Um, she's been running like crazy. So good. Good for her. And uh, Todd says, "Yep, cross country nerd here too. One of my teammates now runs ultra marathons. Doesn't he know they invented cars? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious, Todd. I love that comment because it, here was my theory uh, shortly after." getting out of the whole running thing once I found um, my love of beer is uh, I went from, you know, what I consider being a, a decent runner. I thought it was pretty good to uh, my, my saying was I don't run unless I'm being chased. And even then it's dependent on how big the guy is or girl. <laughs> so anyways, good stuff there. All right, guys, well, Martha, good morning. Thank you for checking in and, and, um, Appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully everybody's having a great Saturday morning off to a little bit of a later start than usual here because of the run this morning. But uh, let's do this, guys. You guys ready? Ready to talk about success? Uh, actually, hold on. I've got a, I got a visitor here. <laughs> let's see if he's going <laughs> to. Hello. hello. Can you say hello into that thing? No, he's going to be shy now. So everybody, this is Lewis. This is uh, the fast guy here. What was your time today? 35, 35, 47, 35, 47. So good job. All right. Everything going okay out there. Okay. Well, we're going to, we're going to get through this Lou and it's probably going to get, what do you guys think about 30 minutes or so? And, uh, you got it. All right. Love you, bud. Thanks. Okay. See ya. <laughs> All right. Thanks guys. I appreciate you. Uh, yeah, you're gonna you, you can leave it open. It's no big deal. If you want to close the door, you can close the door. Okay. All right. Well, um, mom says, hey, Lou, man. Mom tuning in from, from dad's uh, page, though. So I don't know if you can change the comments there, Kyleen, but uh, you're welcome to tune in from the page, too. All right, guys. Let's do this. Okay. So um, topic, facing the fear of success. And and I appreciate everybody in in Todd's group, the, the wholesale group over there. Uh, they actually was kind of what got me thinking about this whole thing. Um, you know, cause this was an, I don't know. I, I don't want to come across as like a, a jerk. So if I'm coming across as a jerk, that's not the intention here, but I, I, I didn't realize that the fear of success was something that, that people dealt with. And, and I guess in a way that does make me a little bit of a jerk because I, I, I didn't have the empathy. I didn't open my eyes enough to that thing. You know, I, I've just kind of been so laser focused on success that, it, it just went right over my head that, that anybody would be afraid of that. But as I started listening and learning and, and it is really interesting how the law of attraction works in, in, in your life, because as soon as I opened my mind up to this whole concept, everything around me started kind of like, Oh yeah, that, that links in that links in. Oh, okay. Yes. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. Um, in fact, I'm going to get over to the banner section here and pop this up, um, show this down here. Uh, it, 
gentleman here that I met recently. He's got a, an email marketing company. I'm, I'm learning more about it right now, but uh, his name's Tom Ruich, and uh, he's going to probably in sometime in October come on here and talk email marketing with us. Uh, he's a He's a super smart guy in that realm, uh, but his company is called marketvolt.com. And right after I decided that this was going to be our topic here on Saturday, uh, I got an email from him, um, you know, just his usual kind of uh, email, uh, kind of weekly email that, uh, that he sends out. And the title of it was, How a Marketing Success Turned into a Business Failure. I'm like, well, there you go. There's <laughs> there's the reason why. And uh, as you guys, I don't know if anybody wants to take a quick guess here as to what he then decided to talk about, but um, it was a very timely thing. So you guys want to make some guesses here real quick. I know there's a little bit of a delay. So make a couple guesses as to what he was talking about here. Timely. So this hit my email box September 4th. So think what was happening in the news around September 4th. Uh, it happened around a uh, fast food restaurant, if that's any uh, any help at all. So uh, <laughs> I'll let you guys guess here real quick. Any guesses? Fear of success, Todd says, question mark. Fear of success. Uh, so it, it was not about the it, it definitely how marketing success turned into a business failure. But the topic that uh, he talked about was uh, chicken Sammies. There you go, Todd. Todd is the winner. Uh, you win a high five from Aaron. There you go. <laughs> chicken sandwiches. Yes, Popeye's chicken sandwiches. Um, and, and I'm like, there you go. There's their success, overdone success. And, and in a lot of ways, Popeye's really failed at taking advantage of their success here. So it makes a lot more sense to me and and I appreciate it and I apologize that it took me a while to get there and for those of you folks out there that 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 ha have struggled with that um you know that that's a that's a great thing that means that you really have your head around what you're doing and you're really thinking about ultimate success not just quick success so um with all that, you know, my mission here, my uh, that that I've got at the top of my business plan for Montco Consulting, is take the fear out of small business by giving you a you giving you guardrails and success fundamentals for achieving your personal and business goals. So, with that being said, I figured, okay, let's talk about some ways that we can overcome this. All right, so you guys ready to dive in and and definitely. Uh, bring it, bring it. I want to hear everything that you guys do to overcome your fears of this stuff. And uh, I'm going to give you some ideas and some things that I realized that I was just doing subconsciously because I'd actually realized that I did have the same fears. I just was able to compartmentalize that into a subconscious way of, of getting over it. So as my wife will tell you, uh, the first thing that, that, I think allows me to really kind of overcome that is I am a planner plan, plan, plan. You know, you guys hear me talk about business plans all the time planning. I mean, I, I walk into a restaurant, you know, somebody once told me that they thought maybe I had PTSD though. I've never been through a, a traumatic situation as far as I can recall. Um, but everything is on alert for me, you know, so I'm, in a restaurant, I'm looking around, what's going on? Is there anything kind of seems out of the ordinary, kind of back to the wall? Um, you know, so that's obviously a little bit overdone. But the more planning, the more thought you can give to the potential outcomes that are going to happen, the easier it's going to be. Because you know what? When you have that ultimate success and you're thinking about that ultimate success and you're thinking about the thousands of people coming to you to buy that chicken sandwich or in our case here, the thousands of people that are going to walk into your store when you open up that storefront and they're going to want stuff and they're going to want it now. And they're going to, you know, they're going to find things that you missed. And, and so having an idea, having a plan about, okay, how do I deal with that? What, what's going to be the, the situation? What, what do I go, go through? So um, within the military, they have a, a process they call OODA loops. And, and I am nowhere close to an expert on it. I've heard a couple of podcasts about it, and that's what kind of got me thinking about it. I certainly want to learn more about that. But what I would suggest you guys do is go out and look at, you know, kind of get your head wrapped around what, what the OODA loop means. Basically, 
from my understanding of it, it's a process of exactly what we just talked about. It's planning ahead, thinking through all the scenarios, all the different possibilities, and then determining when that scenario happens, what is going to be your response? Because if we're doing the success principles here and the number one principle is taking 100% responsibility for ourselves, then that E plus R equals O thing really comes into play. Event plus response equals the outcome. So the event you have no control over, the response you have control over it. So if you've thought ahead, making that response decision is going to be a lot easier. And then that will determine the outcome, whether it's success or failure. So, you know, the way to look at that, it's like kind of a, if this, then that, you know, kind of, okay, if this happens, then I do this. If this happens, then I do this. Okay. So that's number one. If you guys have any suggestions there, again, love to hear what, what you think, what you do, what you use. But the number one thing I think that uh, I've been able to do to kind of make it a, a non-event for me is by planning as much as I possibly can. Now, does that mean that every time I, I come up with everything? No, nowhere close. In fact, most of the time, I probably wasted a little time in there. But you know what? It's in my head. It's 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 one of these things where... I'm thinking through it, you know, I'm, I'm writing some of it down when I, when I have time, you know, I've got notebooks and scribbles and scratches and, and things everywhere that I can kind of come back to and reference easily, but it's not that I'm, I'm going crazy out of my ways. And, and I certainly don't let the uh, paralysis by analysis get in my way. I try not to at least. So, um, you know, I don't know, Kylie, maybe she thinks differently, but <laughs> all right. So there's number one. So any, any thoughts you guys have on that? And I'm not sure if, if the comments are, are working. Um, Alan, hi, thank you for checking in. And, uh, thanks for, uh, thanks for the help, uh, answering why the heck that shirt that I got, uh, was, was so Ugh, yuck. Yeah, we, I'm, I'm not wearing it. <laughs> I, I didn't wear it for the race because I just couldn't bring myself to wear such a poorly screen printed shirt as a guy in this industry. I would uh, be embarrassed. So if you go over my personal Facebook page, you can check out the pictures on that. So uh, Todd says, great stuff. Know that your plan needs to be flexible too. You never know what the day is going to bring. Absolutely. And, and again, that's just all part of that. If this, then that thinking through making having that flexibility to make decisions quickly when when you get pressed, you know, when you get into that situation. But that doesn't mean, again, that it's completely locked in stone, that this is the only way. Yes, you have to be flexible. You have to roll with the punches. I love what Todd talked about yesterday morning on um, the two regular guys. He was saying that, you know, on Fridays and Saturdays, because of their situation with the walk-in business and stuff like that, they, they, they don't plan for a lot of production that day. Anything they do get done that day, gravy, but they keep their things open. That way they can handle the things that they're not prepared for and be be ready for all that walk-in business, be ready for that success, all right? So um, yes, yes, Todd, I, I am a t-shirt snob. It, it was just really bad. I mean, it was a blue shirt like this, a blue poly shirt like this with white uh, printing on it. And, um, Boy, it was, yeah, it was bad. It, it was just, I felt really bad for whoever printed those because I can't believe that those got out the door. I mean, maybe they were just pressed and rushed and cranked up the dryer temperature and, and really pushed them out. But all that blue sublimated right into the white and uh, yeah, it looked, it looked terrible. So, <laughs> all right. Cricket, Jana, a little late, but here, better late than never, right? And you can always go back and rewatch later. So appreciate you joining us. All right, so number one, it's already 20 minutes in. <laughs> abysmal is the word. Thank you, Alan. There we go. Abysmal. The prints were abysmal. Um, all right, number one, planning. Planning is key. Uh, go look up OODA loops, uh, if this and that, any of those kinds of things. That kind of having as many opportunities to make good decisions quickly as you can is a great way to be able to handle too much. Okay. Number two, have an abundance mentality all of the time. Build relationships. Put the need for help out there now. Okay. So maybe you don't have a ton of business, but you're coming, you're in a community like this, you're in a community like Todd's wholesale group. You're in a community like the regulators. Um, you know, I, we were talking about that shirt that got printed last night. If that person would have been a regulator, 
they would have known to reach out to Alan Howe to find out how to print white on polyester without dye migration. He's taught seminars on that. This guy knows all the little tips and tricks within like, I don't know, Alan, it was probably like less than a minute after I posted the photo that you had a response up there to gray underbased, watch your temps, low cure ink, three easy things that this person could have done and, and made made these shirts great. But instead, you know, they're they're now the poster child for how not to print blue polyester shirts. So <laughs> and they don't even know it. I, maybe they do. And maybe I'll get hate mail from them. But, you know, I, th that's the reality of it, that they need the feedback. And if they can't take the feedback, then then that's on them. But back to this abundance mentality. That's what we all have to do. And, and Todd says, swallow your pride and ask for help when you don't know how to do something. Exactly. But th that, again, comes from the abundance mentality. You don't have any great secrets. You don't have any, you know, people are going to come do business with you because they want to do business with you. And people are going, if you surround yourself with other successful companies, even companies that may be competitive, you guys are not exactly the same. The, there's differences between everybody at all times and there's plenty of business to go around. I know some days it feels like it, that's not the case, but a lot of that probably comes from having limiting beliefs about what's possible. So instead of worrying about the competition, why don't you get to know the competition? Maybe they've got more work that they can handle right now and they might need your help. Uh, you know, things like that. Have that abundance mentality of, just always attracting in as many things as you can. And, and this is, again, I'm, you know, one of my strengths is my competitiveness, which drives me to, to push harder and do more. Um, and, you know, which can be a great thing, but it can also be a very difficult thing because there are times where I see one of my peers being successful and all I can think about is, uh, darn it, that should have been me. No, it shouldn't have been me. It should have been them. I should be grateful and happy for them. And, and I, I get to that, you know? And so reminding myself to have that abundance mentality allows me to make the relationships, build the communities around me that is going to allow for the ebbs and flows. So when business is down, maybe that community that I've built of other printers around that I'm a part of and in Todd's group or wherever it is, or all of these places, then they're going to say, hey, you know what? I've got this big job. I really need some help. Can you help me with this? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do some business. And then guess what? When all of a sudden something of yours goes viral and uh, things are, are really going well for you and you need help and you don't want to be turning away customers, then guess what? Now you've got somebody to connect to. So having that abundance mentality is so important. And, and I, I honestly think that that was one of the things that kind of drove Terry and I to continue through some of the difficult times with two regular guys, because when we started that almost eight years ago, um, it, it was getting a heck of a lot better, but it, there still wasn't that, you know, open openness that we now see in our industry. Uh, you know, when I got into this industry 20 years ago, it was super closed. I was fortunate enough to get uh, my foot in the door with a gentleman named Scott Fresner, who, who, gave me a lot of avenues to, to be able to kind of grow and, and blossom. And he was such a good marketing guy and, and, and just really uh, passionate about the things that he was doing that it really helped me a lot. But beyond that, you know, I mean, there definitely were some good people. James Ortolani is a name that, that comes to mind. You know, I met Alan back then, um, uh, Charlie Tobley, you know, definitely some good people and those people are still around, but there was also a lot of people that was, that were just all about competing and fighting it. Scott used to have these terrible, terrible episodes with a guy named David Cran. And I'm not even sure if he's out there. I haven't heard about him in years, you know, but it was all about the competition. He, he used to put like stickers of Scott with devil horns in the bathrooms at trade shows. Like I was crazy. So changing to that abundance mentality was so important to me. And, and I'm so excited that we're there now, but I want you guys to take that a step further because that's how you're going to get beyond that fear of success, knowing that you have partners, you have a community around you that's here to support you and that will you know, lift you up when you're down and you know what, help you out when you need help, that kind of thing. So that's number two.
Uh, let me see. Let me go back to some uh, comments here. Make sure I didn't miss anything here. And I think I already talked about Todd's swallow your pride and ask for help. Okay. Um, knowing what to do and doing it is a different thing. <laughs> uh, one one bad job, one shortcut can lose multiple clients because of word of mouth and social media. Yeah, that stupid Aaron Montgomery guy sticks a picture of my bad shirts out there on Facebook and it goes viral. No, I was kidding. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Todd says, use other success to drive your own success. Totally. And 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 I love that you're saying that. And I want to make sure everybody takes that in in the right way. The, the word use is can kind of sometimes be off-putting to people. But that's not the case. It, if you have an abundance mentality, then you also have this ability to work together. So using other success as as that leveling out of things. So if you have, you know, you know that there's plenty for everybody. So it, it just kind of gets everything weighted out correctly and 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 moving forward. And and so that's a great thing. Uh, Todd says, awesome idea. You're getting a halo or angels wings decals in trade show bathrooms. <laughs> I, I'll go for that. that that'd that be fine. Um, <laughs> oh, man. My picture in trade show bathrooms. Probably down at the bottom of the urinals, I'm guessing. So um, awesome. Thanks, Todd. <laughs> All right. So let's get to number three before my... Uh, sorry, oh, he is still out there. Okay. I was going to say, maybe he just left. Um, All right. Number three. This this one is is also a tough one, especially as a, a growing small business. Uh, you know, we want everything. We want to. You know, I, I hear this all the time from folks that you know what I, I'm not. I can't turn away business. I can't afford to. You know, I need to, to to do business with everybody. But but I'm here to say that you can't afford to do business with everybody because what's happening. So number three is making sure that you're attracting the right customers. And and I think this is really important, especially for small businesses starting up, because if you're just trying to get everything, you're going to get everything. But what's going to happen is you're going to get the customers that aren't the right customers for you because your message is not clear, because you don't know exactly what you want. Um, and when you don't know exactly what you want, you're going to get things that you don't want. And then you're going to get bogged down doing those things that you don't want. I, I probably have told this story before, but I go back to a young lady that came up to me after a seminar where we were talking about the customer experience. And she was coming, kind of laminating the fact that you know, she was an embroiderer and she wanted to do more embroidery work, but wasn't getting enough of it. Um, but, but she was getting all of these um, alteration jobs and, and just random stuff that was taking up all of her time. And because of that, she didn't have time to do more marketing. And, and uh, you know, so I, we, we kind of talked through it a little bit and finally got to the point where I found out that she would had done a couple of cool projects in that alteration space that, that worked out pretty good. And she posted those things and she was promoting those things. And that was kind of the message that was going out there to the world. I asked to see your Facebook page and stuff like that. I'm like, well, where, where's the, where's the pictures of the things you want to be doing? Well, I haven't had those jobs yet. Okay. Let me ask again, where's the pictures of those things that you want to be doing? And a light bulb went off for her. And, and I love this because she, she just, and, and things really worked out for her in a sense that she was able to kind of take that to that next level and go, okay, now that makes sense. So, yep, I'm going to go and make a couple samples, you know, uh, do some different things and, 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 and stay focused on the things that I want. And next time somebody comes with an alteration job, figure out a way to, to say no. Um, so let me, let me get to what Julia's got here, because I think this is a, a, a good comment that goes along, along with what I'm talking about here. I agree. I just had to turn away a fairly big job because I didn't want to lowball my time and product. They would have been a great partnership, but I couldn't undersell myself. That is, Julia, pff, man, there's another high five. That, that is awesome. That is incredible and shows a ton of business maturity. It's, that's the hardest thing. And, and you know, you want to get the jobs, but to be able to understand that your time is valuable, your stuff is valuable, and it's okay to say no. Um, I, I'm here in a co-working space and I was here yesterday and there was a gentleman out just out outside here and he does uh, consulting for gyms. 
and he happened to be on a uh, a phone call with a business partner of his and and you know I wasn't trying to uh, <laughs> listen in but he was fairly loud so I, I heard some of it and and it really was was that whole conversation about yes I could get the job for this but then I'm undervaluing my time and I could kind of tell that the person on the other side was like yeah but they're not gonna they're not gonna go go along at that price you know that's that price is too high for them he said then that's okay then i'm okay to walk away from that you know and, and that's a big deal and a hard deal but you got to walk away from that because what's going to happen is you're going to take that you're not going to make enough money on it you're probably going to lose money you're going to spend all of that time that you could be getting the jobs that you want and need for your business to be successful um and and do that so attract the right customers, make sure your message is really clear, spend time understanding what your customers are coming to you for, why they're coming to you, and and make sure that that message is clear, that I want this at this, this is the price. You know, every time I hear somebody say, well, I can't, I can't sell that. You know, I can't, I can't get that for that. Um, you know, there was some discussion about a, a, a tumbler and how expensive the blank was. Oh, well, I can't, I can't, charge somebody that much for it. Okay. But that's not, that doesn't mean that that tumbler is too expensive. That doesn't mean that you couldn't sell a shirt for $25, $30. People do it all the time. Look at a guy like Johnny Cupcakes. Those things sell for 35 to 45 bucks. They're two color prints and um, they probably cost him less than five bucks a piece to, to have made for him. He doesn't even print his own stuff. He probably can make them for less than four, three, four bucks if he printed them himself, but that's not what he's, he's all about, the marketing. People line up to buy those things at 35 to $40 a piece. Uh, you know, the, the, so it's not that people will not, it's that your message and the way that you're selling things and the customers you're attracting will not pay for that stuff. So you, make sure you value yourself, attract the right people. And then the final piece of that when you're attracting the right customers, because like Julia had, uh, the situation came to her, um, the quicker you can be honest with them, the quicker and better things are going to be. Because if you've led them along for a little bit, just trying to hope that maybe they'll take your price. Be right up front. Be honest. Be quick. You know, if one of the fears of success was, you know, opening up a storefront and having too many people to be able to help them all appropriately. Well, guess what? As soon as you realize that you're at that point, you look around and go, okay, um, either I'm going to be here in 24 seven for the next three days, or I'm going to have to start being honest with people and, and start getting out there and saying, Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming in. Um, right now we've got more than we can do and, and, and be honest and upfront, you know, that, that was, I, I'll, I'll read about this, this Popeye's chicken sandwich thing here real quick. What, cause he, <laughs> this guy, Tom from market vault actually went in and checked it out himself. Um, so it, I'm just going to read this here real quick because I think this kind of matches up. He says, I visited Popeye's several times last month. I had to see what all the fuss was about. First time, no sandwiches, no idea when they'd have them again. Second time, no sandwiches and come back tomorrow at 1130. We'll be out of them by noon. Third time, the day after the second time, no sandwiches. Sorry about that. We didn't get the shipment we expected. Uh, so they weren't open and honest and upfront. Hey, as you can tell, these things are darn popular. We're trying to order more, but we can't. So here's the situation. <laughs> How about you try one of these other things that we have here or something like that? So again, just being honest quicker, you know, refund if you have to. If you've taken on a job and, and you realize that it's just not going to work, be honest with them as quickly as you can and refund them. Give them a little bit extra. Take a little bit of a hit. You know, it, you have the control over that experience. And just because you have to say no, that doesn't mean that you have to be get negative feedback. No doesn't mean negative. No means I can't help you, but let me try to find somebody else who can help you. Or let's figure out how we can solve your problem together. I can't personally solve it. But maybe I know somebody in my, hey, I go back to my abundance mentality. I've got a community of people. Uh, you know, I can ask Julia to take take this job on. Maybe I can I can ask Todd to. Hey, Todd, I I know I've got a, a vinyl cutter 
but I am slammed right now. Uh, any chance that I could get some wholesale uh, decals made? Oh, yes. Todd makes wholesale decals. So let's have Todd do that. It, it, just easy when you're able to do that. So um, totally on my soapbox here, but that that's also, that's one of those things that's really important to me. Julia said, exactly. I told them up front, this is my price. And they said, we, we can get it cheaper online. I said, well, I'm a small business, can't compete with someone who has mass production. So go with them. But I love to help you with smaller projects in the future. Here's a sample of that. And, and that's, that's perfect, Julia, you know, with, with that, that the, the service that you provide, the fact that they can come in and talk to you, because guess what, if they could get them cheaper online, why aren't they there right now? You know, that, that's the question to ask. Oh, okay. So, so how come you're here? You just thought you'd check and see. And unfortunately, you know, I've got overhead. I'm a small business. I've got a family to feed. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to buy my fourth vacation home right now. I'm actually trying to send my kids to school. And, and this is the price that I need to be successful. I want you to be successful. And so you know what your price target's going to be. Here's what my price target is going to be to be successful. It's not that I'm being negative. It's not, I'm telling you, no, it's if you can get it cheaper elsewhere, then go get the cheap product, but you don't get Julia. You don't get the service. You don't get the other things that I can provide to you to make your project project a success. So if you got a smaller project and you need a little bit more help with it, just like you said, here's a sample, check it out. We do great stuff and, and help them, help them get to that online thing. You know, <laughs> I've, I've, I've known people to actually hand somebody a phone with the number of the competitor up the street or, or, or print out a sheet and have that available. Oh, you want it cheaper? Okay. Here's the guys up the, up the street. You know, they, they do it differently. You know, they, they use inferior, you know, they use different products, you know, things like that. So anyhow, all right. We good. What else? What did I miss? I miss anything. So those are the three points. Let me just go over those again real quickly here. Number one, way to overcome your fear of success. It really probably overcome a lot of fears. And again, I found out that I was just doing this subconsciously. Um, and so that really helped me kind of open my eyes and understand things. But number one, planning, think through things, be as prepared as you can, but then be flexible, which is a great point that Todd brought up. Uh, number two, have that abundance mentality, be part of a community that's going to help you and support you. Uh, that, that's number two. Number three, make sure that you're attracting the right customers. And when, when you get the wrong customer, be honest with them quickly. All right. So there it is. My, let's see. Nice. I'm going to get this figured out. Email right here. If you want to reach out to me, uh, I would be more than happy to go through some specifics with you and uh, get into the details and get into the weeds. Um, I'm going to put one other thing up down here at the bottom because I would like to do this. This is part of the success principles training that I'm going through. And I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this real well. And it's not a great printout, but it's called a Dif difficult or troubling situation worksheet. And um, I would like to practice a little bit, but I'd also like to help you guys with some stuff here. And it goes through a few questions like what different, um, what is a difficult or troubling situation in your life? How are you creating it or allowing it to happen? Uh, moving on down, uh, what would you rather be experiencing? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go through that one-on-one -on -one with you, maybe on a Zoom call, I think would be uh, probably a great, great thing to do. Um, so what I will do is the first, first three people. Okay. So I, I don't have a lot of time between now and the end of the month because I've got some projects I got to get done, but I would love to spend 15 to 30 minutes with you and three people. If you'd like to go through this worksheet with me, um, I will send it to you and let you fill it out first and you send it back to me and then we'll go over it one bit at a time and see if we can get to a solution. Um, you know, that's one of my strengths is, is a uh, solution finder. It drives my wife crazy sometimes because sometimes she just wants me to listen and all I want to do is fix the problem. <laughs> so um, you get to stand in for my wife. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So go to this link down here calendly.com slash Montco consulting slash free consult. And I will put a link to that in the comments here in just a second. Maybe I can do it right now. Uh, nope. Yep. <laughs> 
Nope. Yep. How about that? All right. Uh, comments. Boom. Is it in there? All right. I think it's in the comments. First three people to pick a, a, a date and time to do that. We'll, we'll get to, to do that. If, if, uh, if you're the fourth or fifth, I'll tell you, sorry, unfortunately, I've already got that, but I'm, I'm happy to go through this with you. So testing that out. All right, guys, that's everything I've got. Anything else that you guys have before uh, I get back to my day with my son and uh, doing some great stuff? Um, Julia says, I have been meaning to contact you. Julia, perfect opportunity. Let's do it. I would love to spend some time with you. Uh, I love everything that you're you're doing. I think you're, you're, you've got everything right there lined up for, for a great amount of success. So if I can be even the tiniest part of helping you through anything, I would be super honored. So, all right, you guys have an awesome rest of your Saturday and uh, I will check in with you next week. Okay. Thanks so much for your time.